Hello, my name is Trotter. Welcome to part two of the Roma Hippodrome slash Circus Maximus tutorial. Let's pick up right where we left off. So last time we went over the foundational layer and it's been a little while since I released that video giving you all the time you need to get the base constructed out and hopefully some of your materials gathered. And with that in mind, we are going to start on uh, what, what is going to be this end of the Hippodrome first, the big round end here. So let me give you an overview of how the tutorial is going to be structured. As I said in the previous uh, part one, I'm separating this building out into three distinct phases. We are going to be constructing this round end first, and then the middle part, and then the towers and the arch at the end there, and then I guess a fourth with the uh, statuary and everything down the middle there. Uh, so I guess that's four phases. Uh, but as you can see here, I have laid these out into distinct sections here. This is the second section. We want to focus in on this one over here, where for the first couple of episodes, we are going to focus in on building this structure. It's probably going to be uh, eh, maybe maybe two or three parts. We'll, we'll see how many it goes. And as we go, this particular structure right here, uh, different from most of the rest of the building, is going to have a two-way symmetry, meaning that if we draw a line right down the middle here and split it in twain, uh, this side will be a mirror image of this side over here, which is one of the reasons I said you can use this to construct yourself a, uh, a variation on a coliseum if you want to, or an, an amphitheater by building uh, four of the quadrants. So as we go, we'll be focusing in on building uh, one of these quadrants uh, because all the numbers will be the same for the other end. And uh, this one is a little bit more simplified than my previous uh, Colosseum, especially with, uh, with all of the um, uh, passages down the middle. I didn't bother with the connecting stairs on these. And it also doesn't have a, a, second, a second colonnade down here on the lower level, we've got some exposed brickwork there instead, but we do have a double, a double colonnade up there as well. Okay, so here we have to build out the very last section of the base, which is only going to consist of just a, another step of cobblestone right here. A big rectangle of that that's going to go all the way around your building. Let's go all the way down here and talk about that, and then we can get started on the uh, uh, apps at the end there. All right. Uh, so uh, we have uh, this section that we built previously. And what you need to do uh, next is build a big rectangle of cobblestone all the way around the building except at the front here. So we're going to start from this point here. And you can use the count for the cobblestone that you already laid out to when you get over to here, you want to leave a little indent and cut the corner there. And then follow the line around here. And then here, you want to have it extend over the front where you should have laid down some uh, stone bricks there. Just put cobblestone directly on top of all those stone bricks, like you see done here. Follow that all the way around. And keep going when you get into the interior sections there. And, uh, hmm, there's a stair. That, um, that should just be cobblestone. And then you want to lay down a line of stone bricks all the way from here on top of the deep slate. All the way for, uh, whatever 300 and something blocks that this was. Till you get to the other end here, and then you want to, of course, follow the curve that we counted out around. You want to have deep slate on the bottom, and then stone bricks. And then, uh, if you want to, you, you can go ahead and place some diorite on top of that as well, like you see here, and just follow the ring around. Again, and do that until you get all the way, all the way to the other end. And, of course, uh, the only difference for uh, the back here is going to be, it's just straight runs of cobblestone until you get all the way back here from our first block of uh, wool that we placed back there. And then just follow that all the way around here. 
and turn the corner again and head off around there and that's going to be the entirety of the foundation complete now you can see also that we have a pavement to install so I think the easiest way to do this is just going to start back here at this corner at the back and uh, just make this pattern here it's just it's a uh, three by three of deep slate and then a ring of uh, five by five of cobble around that and then seven by seven of diorite around that and then you just reverse all of that to make the next square first diorite and then cobble and then deep slate and that will probably help more I was on the wrong texture pack when I was recording I like to use just the default texture pack these days for tutorials but I forgot to turn it off uh, but anyway, you can see that more clearly here, now that we don't have the variation in the textures and everything. And uh, once you do uh, one section of these, of course, if you've seen the Roman Road tutorial, this is just a, a, a simple repeating pattern. You can see you want to make uh, um, your paving, just like so. And uh, let me give you a good uh, top-down view of uh, the whole section here. like that there and the um, the width of the platform wasn't quite enough that we could get all the way another section here so this is going to correspond to our center line right along of there so as I said we can split the building in two and of course um, if we uh, draw a center line as we go of course this is our line of symmetry for the building uh, there are only a few spots that where the building doesn't have symmetry, like uh, most notably in the middle, but also some sections over there for the Emperor's box are non-symmetrical. Everything else is going to be symmetrical, though, meaning that if you build something like this on that side of the center line, you want to build the mirror image, like, like that, on the other side of the center line right there. So keep that in mind as we go. And I suppose uh, we need to do a lot of block counting in this uh, next phase. Now let's finish looking at the plaza here first though. As you can see you want to extend the pattern for the plaza just across the pavement here like you see and then when we get to this section this corresponds to the uh, the middle section of the hippodrome and you need to build quite a lot of these little alternating uh, plaza patterns till we get all the way down here to the end, of course, where we're going to be building our towers. And just uh, just to get a measurement, from this point right here all the way to that is going to be what? 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 28 blocks to get to that point right there. And then just continue the repeating pattern all the way back to the corner that you start in. All right. Now we need to uh, scribe out the bottom of this section here. It looks like there's a little stray deep slate down here. You don't need to build that. That's just a leftover from construction. So the materials list will be a little off on that number. Uh, for this one, I think the easiest place is, you should have already established a center line right here, just from the building of your plaza. Uh, if you don't have a center line here, that means you built your plaza wrong. So you need to uh, double check all of that. Uh, but once, once you do, once you have this pattern here, which is going to be what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks from this uh, this from that block there. Uh, we then want to, from our center line block here, and in, including the block here, this, all the measurements are going to be including this block, we're going to count for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then go over a block and count for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 3, and 3, then 2, 2, 2, 1. Then 2, 2, 1, 1. 2, 
one, one, uh, diagonal of what? It's going to be a 45 degree diagonal of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then two, one, one, two, two, one, two, 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 and then probably what? Three threes again. Three threes. And then four, then five, and then a lot. Uh, however many this is for one, two, three, and that's going to be uh, going all the way down there. But for the purposes of the first section, this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so that is the arc that you need to lay down for the outer foundation over here. This is going to correspond to uh, to this section of cobble down there. If you want to, you can uh, you can ring around this with some stairs or something to make it a little bit more accessible. And then um, I think definitely for the lowermost sections here. You will need to be filling that in with cobble. Uh, but for the lower sections here, this is the portions I said inside of the building where you can save a lot of uh, raw materials on the cobblestone. Like if if around the tunnels here, if you like, you know, if you build all of, all of this back here hollow, uh, you can save yourself uh, quite a lot of materials for cobblestone from the almost what half was it almost half a million. Cobblestone, I forget how much it was. It was a lot. Um, there are going to be some other sections. We can do that at, of course. Uh, uh, down here in the foundations and everything, you don't have to have this hollow. I mean, you don't have to have this solid. You can leave it hollow. Uh, but do remember to light it up, though. Uh, you don't want to have your hippodrome be a, a, a huge mob farm. That'd be really bad. There are going to be some sections up here at the top as well. Where cobblestone can be saved, like like uh, underneath the roof here and everything. If you leave all that hollow, you can save quite a bit of cobble there as well. But most of your most of the cobble is going to be spent uh, under, underneath the seats and everything here. So I just want to point that out before we go on to the next phase. Uh, so I think, uh, but before you go ahead and fill all that in with cobble, let's go ahead over here to the next phase and take a look at. Uh, at uh, this section here. Uh, so, as I said, uh, this entire hippodrome has been sliced up. Well, you know, for the, for the most part, everything except for the um, the the columns and everything there, because those, those just go straight up. Um, but uh, all the difficult parts have been sliced one block at a time. So we will only be, only be going up one block as we go. And from here, from uh, let's go all the way back to this portion over here. I think uh, for, for the duration of this portion, we're going to start always back at, uh, back at this point right here on our center line. Uh, so you can be able to follow along. Uh, so from our center line here, if we want to extend that out another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks, we will come to the, the middle wall here, which is going to be uh, forming part of the uh, uh, the solid structure, which we're going to be holding up our seating. But as I said, remember this is a place where you can save materials. So behind this, if you want to build, uh, just leave all of that uh, all that down there hollow. You can save quite a lot of materials. So beginning here from our center line, like so, we want to count and including this block here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, four, three, three, two, 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 one, two, one, two, and then a, a long diagonal of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then two, one, two, one, two, 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 and then three. Three and then what? Four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So if you go ahead and mark out that line, this is all you need to extend the cobblestone foundation out to. And everything behind that you can leave uh, as hollow. 
Uh, now here on the interior, all you need to do is extend up the diorite that you laid down by another block, all the way around two blocks tall, like you see done here. And of course you can just have nothing behind that. I've got like, you know, stone bricks and everything, but you can save a lot of materials if you just leave all that hollow. Uh, so next thing is we are building now the uh, very bottom of our columns, like you see, like you see down there. So beginning from our center line, we want to count. Uh, let's use the uh, the half slabs for this. So if we want to count over one, two, three, and then one there, you want to make uh, this this simple pattern. All of the column uh, bases will have this exact same pattern made out of deep slate. For that, for that right there. A little a little cross pattern and then from there we want to count out um, uh, because this is going to be curving around from here we want to count out one two three and build another one right here and then moving back a block we want to count one two three and build another one and then here we want to count over one two three and then back for one and two and build another one there. And then from here, I'm gonna try and do it at the same place on all the columns. Count over for three, and then back for three. And then over from here, we're gonna count for three, and then back for one, two, three. And then from here, we wanna count just straight back, one, two, three, four, five to get to that there. Let me zoom out a minute so we can recap that. Uh, and I think uh, this middle one here, this should be on 45 degree diagonal. So if we go back to the corner of our building here, right here, and just draw a 45 degree diagonal of however many blocks this is gonna be, all the way back we should be hitting the diagonal of this column shaft here. Yep, right there. You can see this lines up directly on a diagonal. Right there. Like so. And if we if we want to extend uh, just for just for illustration purposes, I want to do this one time. We want to extend our diagonal in a bit. Now, diagonals are very useful tools when building things. Now, we can see this also intersects the diagonal. Uh, that is um, a one eighth of the arc on the inside here. So we've been talking about one quarter of the building here. We have a full we have a, have a full half right here. I've been focusing in on a quarter, uh, but as I said, we have just done one eighth as well. Uh, which is useful when making round things because you can get away with building a lot less. Well, at least when I design things, I can get away with building a lot less. Uh, but for the purposes of the measurements, now all you need to do to get the next eighth of this, the second eighth of the building, is to reverse the numbering again. Like I showed you. I'll go down here and measure it, but I wanted to point this out uh, just uh, for the future. Uh, so if we measure from here, we count back we count back five, you can see we are now mirroring on this a diagonal here. So what we built on this side, we are now going to use this as a mirror line, and we will be mirroring it again over here. So if we count out to from here, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three, then one, two, three, one, two. Then one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. And uh, that's going to be all for that. And I think it's going to be like, um, I forget how, how many it is for the other ones. I think I think the intercolumnation distance in general for this building is going to be three. And uh, by that I mean the distance that the columns are spaced apart from each other is called an, an intercolumnation. And uh, you always want to have that number um, if you're designing something something from scratch, I recommend that you keep it at to an odd number, 
Uh, but sometimes there are, are times where you want to make it an even number. Uh, but in general, I don't recommend using even numbers for buildings until you've uh, until you're very comfortable with uh, with doing structures and you want to start challenging yourself. Because odd numbers uh, in Minecraft are always a challenge for some reason. That's just how it works out. Uh, so I think we've uh, beat that phase to death. So let's go on to the next one, which is going to be quite easier than the last one. We had to do a lot of numbering and everything, but for the next one. You want to go around and uh, build yourself uh, the rest of the column bases. On top of the deep slate, you want to just put cobblestone. And to save yourself some materials, you can leave the cores of these in there hollow if you want to. Perhaps with a torch in there or something. Uh, but on top of all the column bases, go around and uh, just slap cobblestone. On top of all of those, all the way around the semicircle. Uh, and good news, behind that, you want to do the same thing for the cobblestone behind that there. You don't have to put, uh, you don't have to put this uh, excess of deep slate and everything. Back there, remember, you, you can just leave all of that hollow behind here if you want to. Save yourself some materials. And as you can see, it's just, uh, just cobblestone stacked on top of that right there all the way around the building. Alright, so on the inside here, good news again. We want to put another layer of stone bricks, just like you did down here. Uh, do another one right there, all the way around uh, the semicircle here for the apps. All right, that was easy. So next phase here, this is going to be a little bit more difficult because we are now putting in some of the um, uh, passageways to get to the seats and everything. Uh, so let's start with the column bases first. So we want to have uh, right side up stone bricks, eight of those. Right here, you can con you can continue to leave that hollow back here if you want to. Right there for that, you want to do all these column bases exactly the same, all the way around the building. I will leave you to do that. Uh, behind that though, we do have the uh, the brickwork pattern. And for this, we want to have just a, a uh, sort of like a mortar line of diorite. And we want to have that set back one block from the cobblestone. As you can see here, I'm not going to do the measurements because you already have this measurement. All you have to do is go around the building, set it back by one block, like you see it being done here. Like so, I'll scan all the way around this so you can see the full picture. But you just want to go around and uh, and just shave off a block from all the measurements that you have previously done, like so. All the way around the building there, and uh, that's the outside. Uh, now on the interior, uh, on top of the stone bricks, you want to just slobber another layer of deep slate right there, just like we did all the way back here at the beginning. Do, do one more of that, like so. And this is going to represent our uh, sort of safety railing. Or the Hippodrome. I mean, you know, you, you can just jump off of it, but, you know. Uh, health and safety, not really a thing in ancient Rome. Um, and behind that, we want to start laying out the passageways for the uh, the banks of seating and everything. And for this, I just, I, I edged it out with uh, a deep slate for the most part. So behind this, we want to skip back two blocks. Like so there, and count for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 4, and uh, turn the corner for 1, 2, 2, and 3. Although this section here, we are using a little bit of cobble. And then turn the corner for 3, 4, no, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then skip blocks here for 3 blocks, and then let's, let's count out the passageway. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four, four, two, two. No, two, one, one. Two, two, one, one, one. Two, one, one. Two, one, one and one. Then two, two, one, three, two. Three, one, two, three, four, five, and then what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then you're just reversing, you're reversing the number pattern here again because we crossed the center line uh, about uh, 
about right there. All right, let's do the next bank of seating. So let's take a measurement from here and count for what? Uh, one, two, three, four, and lay down a block. And then count for, uh, this will be one there. And two, one, two, one, uh, a diagonal of one, two, three, four, five. Two, one, two, one, two, 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 and two. Turn here and go for one, two, one, one, two, three diagonal, two, four diagonal, and then just an extra one, and then three, two, two, and two. And that'll be your second passageway in bank of seating. Labeled out. And then let's take a measurement from this point here and count for, I guess, four. And then lay down one, and then two, then three, and then what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And uh, somewhere in here we crossed our, our center line. Probably, probably right there. So let me let me go ahead and mark that. And let's go back around here and count for two, two. Five, three, no, yes, then four, then one, two, three, four, five, six, or the center line, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like so, and let me just give you a good top-down view of that. And that's going to be your passageways and your seating all lined out and numbered and everything. So once you have done one of those, you, of course, want to mirror that on this section here, and we will go on to the next phase. All right, so here, for the columns, uh, on top of your right side up stone bricks, you wanna have upside down cobblestone stairs. All the way around those, like you see done there, for all the columns around the building, uh, without exception. And of course, as we go, we have used uh, a, a copious amount of columns on this course, and everyone is going to have exactly the same design. So. As we go forward, I'm only going to show you one of these columns, and I will leave it to you to go around and build the rest of them. Because as I said, they are all exactly copies and pastes of each other. Uh, now, for the next section, you want to go around and, and extend, uh, well, you, if you want to make it more simple and you have extra diorite, you can just extend the diorite wall straight up all the way around uh, the, the uh, semicircle. But here we have a, a sort of an, an inside pattern of brickwork uh, for like a very large ashlar blocks that we want to have. And uh, for these, I will go around and uh, I'm going to count out uh, these, the first layer at least, uh, so you can get a sense for them. Because it's just going to be a repeating pattern, but this does, it is a repeating pattern, but it's bent around a circle, which makes it more complicated. Um, so, let's count out for four, and then skip one, and three, then two, then skip a block, two, three, then skip, three, two, skip, two, two, one, skip, one, two, three, four, um, no, one, two, one, and one, and then skip. And then one, two, three, four, five diagonal and skip. And then one, two, three, four, five diagonal and then skip. And then one, two, three, four, five and then skip. Two, three, four, five and then skip. So as you can see, for every, uh, you want to be skipping every sixth block. So once you count for one, two, three, four, and five, you want to skip a block. One, two, three, four, and five. Skip another block. One, two, three, four, and five and skip a block. And here, this is, if I'm not mistaken, you should hit your center line. Right, right, right here. Which means you just want to reverse the pattern going all the way around. Like so. And I will leave that to you to go ahead and do. It's not a very complicated pattern. As you can see, you just count for five blocks and skip every sixth block. And, uh, that will get, and that will give you uh, the, the, uh, the pattern. It's a very simple pattern. Uh, on the interior of the building, 
there is a there is a mistake. Oh, that's interesting. Look, I, I didn't catch that when I was building this, so some of the some of the block counts will be off for that. Uh, from here, now that we put down a layer of uh, cobblestone and everything, so that's some of our seating as well. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so for the hallways, we want to now have a layer of stone bricks on top of the cobble. Or if you just want to make this simple, you can just have the, all these stone bricks be cobble. But as you can see for the passageway, just go around and stack it up for a second layer directly on top of all the stuff that we counted out in the previous one, all the way here. And there's a center line, so let's turn around. Like so, just stack up your, your cobblestone or your stone bricks and your deep slate as well. Like you see done there. Same deal for the passageways and everything. Like so, we'll take a look at we'll take a closer look at the seating in a moment. This course here denotes our center line. Uh, so for the seating, uh, I don't think I need to count this out because these these are all just uh, plain stone slabs. Like you see done here, I'm using I'm using a slightly different texture. I think I, I think I ripped this from the lodestone texture because it's a lot easier to see for you to count them out. So I don't think I need to do this counting directly. I will just show them to you. All right, and this section here. Right there, and this section here. And of course, we have our we have our center line running right through there. So you want to reverse all of that to get the other quadrant over here. And let me zoom out and give you a big top-down view of the entire thing. And behind that, as you can see, we have a lot of excessive stone bricks and everything that we have used. Remember, you can start leaving all of that hollow. Save yourself a lot of materials. Like so. And I think we can go on to the next phase. All right, for the columns. Uh, you want to go around, and every place you place uh, upside down, cobblestone stairs, place right side up, directly on top of those, like so. For every column all the way around the building. And the good news is, for the wall back here, you want to do exactly the same thing, exactly the same thing that you did previously for the cobblestone, like so. As I said, there's uh, you can save yourself a bit of diorite and things behind here if you only build the sections that are visible. Like here, you're not going to need uh, you're not going to need the extra diorite uh, back back down here, uh, but uh, but on these bottom sections, of course, anywhere that a block is visible, like like that, you know, like there, you are going to need it. Uh, but anyway, just do the exact same pattern with the diorite and the cobblestone that you did previously. All right, on the interior here. Uh, for the hallways, just extend all of these up another block. Like you see done here, just extend them up for whatever block you chose. Uh, just, I think it's with just uh, cobblestone on this layer for the passageways. All the way around, just make them exactly the same. No difference in them just yet. The only difference here is going to be for the seating. So, I'm just going to uh, show this next level of seating to you right here. Like so, I think I think that these are these are half slabs on top of uh, stone bricks there. Remember, we're just going up one layer at a time. So add that to the back of that seating uh, bank there. Add this to that one, and this one here to that one, and this one over here to that one. Now, you remember earlier what I told you about the 45 degree diagonal, right? Well, we can, if we uh, want to draw one through, through the building this way, you can see that, uh, that uh, these two sections of seats, if you mirror that on the other side of the 45 de degree diagonal, they are exactly the same. So you can use this as a check on the seating as you go to make sure that they are symmetrical. So in other words, as we go, you only need to get one-eighth of the apse of the, 
well, it's out of range now, uh, of the uh, uh, um, uh, round end of the hippodrome at the back here. You want to get one-eighth of that correct, and then you can use that as your own reference model that you've already built to remind you of how to build the other eight um, sections. So uh, I, I hope that helps as we go along. So I just wanted to mention it. Uh, so next phase here, uh, we are now building the column shafts for the Hippodrome. And uh, these are going to be, of course, two by two, uh, straight column shafts, all of diorite, like you see here. And just build those exactly as you see all the way around the building. And if you want to, you, you can go ahead and build the entire height of the column shaft at this point here. And I... I completely forget how many, how tall that is. Let's go over here to uh, skip ahead a little bit. Uh, let me go back over here and give you the complete measurement for this at this phase in case you want to save yourself just a little bit of work and extend up all of the diorite column shafts at once instead of just doing it one block at a time since uh, if you're going to be building this in survival, you can just stand on top and just pillar up. So for that, you want to pillar up for one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 blocks for a diorite column shafts all the way around for every column. So let's count that down again, make sure I got it correct. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's going to be quite a lot of diorite, but uh, 12 blocks for the column shaft straight up all the way around the building. We will return to our previous phase. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and do that, I wanted to tell you how. Um, now here for this phase on the outside, remember what we did back a couple of phases when we did the the ring of uh, diorite around the building? You want to do another one of those exactly the same right here as before all the way around the building like so. Just extend it straight up. Uh, from uh, what it was beneath there. And let's take a look at the passageways. Uh, so the passageways here are still going uh, straight up on the sides for, I think they're all just cobblestone. Still here at the moment. Like so. So just extend those straight up. And let's take a look at the seating. So over here for the seating, I haven't remarked directly on it, but there's also some uh, some uh, extra deep slate to separate out the seating here on the sides as well. It's it's following the same pattern as what we laid down before, but it's stopping at different heights here. In other words, this stops at two, and three, and three, and then four for this section here. So let me give you a view of the seating here. And hmm, that looks like a mistake. Possibly. Uh, it would look nicer if this was not cobblestone. If perhaps you got uh, some... Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. Perhaps if, you, uh, perhaps if you did stone bricks underneath here instead of the cobblestone. I didn't catch that when I was doing the reference model. I usually change. We'll change that to be stone bricks underneath there. It looks a little cleaner than the cobblestone. Uh, although, uh, if you prefer the cobblestone instead, you can you can leave that yourself. Uh, but I wanted to point that out in case. I will leave it up to you to decide. But either way, you want to have the half slabs on top of that like so. For these sections here, for what is that, six and then five. And then this bank of seating here. Done like so. And of course, as we go, just feel free to pause the video and take good long looks at all of these things because it's a very visual tutorial. Since, um, since it's far too big for me to show you all the blocks, I have to do some explaining and you have to do a lot of looking. Right there. And for the seating over here. Let's take a closer look here at the seating dividers. Right there, made out of the cobbled deep slate. Like so.
and uh, that will be that phase done. All right. Now here for the next phase, uh, I've already told you everything about these column drums, so I'm going to be completely ignoring those until we get to the top of it. Uh, over here, we now want to use the same pattern that we used down here for this. For this here, uh, we want to instead shift the entire thing over from here by, uh, by four blocks. Right there, or three blocks, depending on how you want to count that. And we want to start with one, and then skip one, then five, skip the, six, the sixth block, then five again, skip, five, skip, and then five, and then skip, and then so on and so forth, all the way around, right here. And as we go, you should be noticing that the, the sixth skipped block here is shifted over from where it was down here. And I know it may seem just a little odd, uh, but once we build all of this and we we back out from it just a little bit, uh, well, we'll have to build a little bit more. We can we can see that what is what we're doing here is building a a brickwork incised pattern where we have blocks of two by five, and then we want to shift the entire thing over where this is the middle here. In the middle of the block, we want to have our mortar line. We want to build another two by five there, just like you would see a brick wall laid out with, of course, the, the next layer, of, the next course of bricks laid out, uh, shifted over where the new bricks are in the middle of the previous bricks. That is what we are doing here for this wall. It's just a little decorative pattern. Uh, but it's a very simple decorative pattern that if you have a very large building like this, you can use. I like to use it on, like, you know, city walls and things like that, too. Uh, so here, we, of course, on this phase, we are finished with the um, um, passageways and everything. You just roof that over with stone bricks or cobblestone or just whatever you want. It doesn't matter, just a flat block. And I will show you the uh, the banks of seating here. We will start and give you good long looks at the banks of seating here. Of course, you want to roof off uh, a, a roof, or well, I guess it is a roof. I finish off the passageways here that go in to this section here. I uh, I could have made this a little bit neater, uh, neater uh, with that, I suppose, but you know, it's a little bit late for that. Uh, but however you want to. However you want to uh, to finish that off back there, it doesn't matter too much. And the next uh, row of seats back here. The divider and the seats here. Another passageway. And the seating here. And of course right here is our good old trusty center line. So let me back out from that here and give you an overview of uh, the seats here for that. And uh, I can still talk, so let's go on for a little while longer. Uh, now here, as I said, just like you extended up the um, the pattern here for the, the bricks and everything and then skipped uh, a row back right here, like that there, You then want to do the same thing again, right there with building another course of brickwork, but follow the pattern that we laid out in the last phase there. And then do that all the way around the building on the exterior, like so. And we'll go on to the seats. All right, so more seating back here like so uh, the seats uh, extend over this section here there and then here of course 
and then here's our 45 degree diagonal there so we just want to have the next seats be a mirror image of what you just built there all the way over to our center line there All right, next phase. On the exterior here, you want to build another line of mortar with the diorite, just like we did down here for the first one. And the second one, you now want to build a, a third one, like so. Uh, and indeed, this is going to serve as one complete module. Like, like from this, let me just draw a little bracket here. From this section here, you can consider this pattern, this whole pattern, to be one module. That from here, you can, if you want to go ahead and build a, I'm not sure of the exact height of that, but if you, if you want to go ahead and build another module uh, from there, in fact, that's definitely not. If you want to go ahead and build yourself another module, you can start over again with, uh, with this block here will correspond to this block here. And then you can build yourself another set of uh, cobble, and then diorite, and then cobble here. And the same spacing and pattern as the first and second courses, you want to build the third and fourth courses in the same way. We'll see that later in the, uh, in the next few phases. All right, so seating again, right here. over here to the 45 degree diagonal separator. So we want to reverse all that again here. Right there until we get all the way over to the center line divider right here. Like so. And we will go on to the next phase. So again, you can see here like I said, this block here will correspond exactly to the pattern of this block right down there. So just use, use what you built previously as a guide and just build it again. And if you want to, you can go ahead and, and build it two blocks tall. Uh, back here again, more seating. Lots of seating in the hippodrome. Uh, you can see we also now have some couple of deep slate behind that as well because that is going to complete the first and lowest bank of seating. So I'm just, just going to scroll very slowly. All the way through here. There's our 45 degree separator. So we want to reverse that pattern. until we hit the uh, the main straight center line down the middle. It's just right here. All right. So that's going to be your first bank of seating completed. And we will go on to another phase. I think there's a little bit of time left. So I think you can now clearly see we have a repeating pattern going on for this, like I explained to you. The first course down here, you want to have the, the third course be exactly the same as with the second course here. For the fourth one that we're going to be building up here, you want to have that be exactly the same. All right, so good news in here. The only thing you have to do is stack up another layer of deep slate behind the wall, uh, behind the seats here for a little wall at the back, like so, all the way around there, all the way around the arc there. But that's going to be all the time we have for today. I hope you are enjoying the Hippodrome tutorial thus far, and I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.